I'm making one more video because there's a few things I didn't mention that's also part of kind of the process um, of doing all this. So I've set up my, let me move this down. I've set up my giveaway. It's been shared. I'm getting a lot of traffic on Facebook and Twitter and new followers and all that. That's good. Um, I also want to consider long-term stuff. So what I've done now is even though this is, um, let's see, even though this one's on my website, part of the problem is I have this link here, uh, this lucky blah, blah, blah. That's just because I signed up. The actual link is just this. But when this giveaway ends, I'm going to have a bunch of traffic and shares pointing at this link, which isn't very helpful if the giveaway is over. Because all this, like, even when the giveaway is over, a lot of people will find the link and they'll come to this page. Um, and if I just said, you know, this giveaway is over, then they can't, they can't do anything else. It's just dead traffic. Um, so what, I'm, what I need to do after this giveaway ends and it says this giveaway is over, then I can change these pictures and I'll change it to say something like this giveaway ended, but come back to my blog to see the latest giveaways or visit my Facebook group. Um, I could also change this link entirely. Like if I got rid of King Sumo, um, I could change this link to a, another page or a static page or something. But so far I've just been replacing the images because you can link the images. So I can change these images into like a sign that says go back to my website for more free stuff and then they can click the image um, and go to my main website. So even when this giveaway is over, the traffic won't just be dead traffic. It'll, it'll find its way back to my actual blog. So that's something um, worth considering. But also I want to take advantage of the fact that I'm doing this um, and build up my blog a little bit. So I've posted a new blog post. I don't use this blog very much, um, but the thing with blogs is you want to use keywords that people are searching for. So part of the reason I went, like I went to this London, UK, um, Yelp, which was fun. Um, I gave away these little booklets, which is pretty cool. Uh, I made another video talking about the booklets, but I just printed like A6 size introductory booklets I could give away that had the first four chapters so people could start reading and then go get the rest of the book for free on my site. Um, so those were popular, but uh, you know, I only gave 400 of these away. That's a lot of work like to go to the conference costs a lot of money to get to london um it's too much work for 400 leads so i wouldn't usually do it uh, but i also gave away this pen and got people to sign up on a, on a list so i got probably like 100 leads from that i just had them sign up here which i could i should have used like an ipad because now i'm gonna have to type these um, emails into mailchimp and then send them an email to tell them about the contest i'm doing but anyway, um, so what I want to be doing is blogging about the thing. So I went to London's 2016 Yelk, so I want to make a blog post about it using the keyword so that when people are searching for, you know, London 2016 Yelk, my website will come up. Um, and I want to do that for every event I go to or everything that I do. So I want to be blogging about what I did. I blogged a little bit about where I am, this is Plovdiv, where we are right now. Um, and then I use, these are the books that I'm giving away. So I want to make sure to name the books and the authors in my blog post because I want Google to know that, like what my site is all about. So I want to talk about not just myself, but I want to talk about other best-selling books in my genre that people are searching for so that um, my blog and my name comes up when people are searching for things that have to do with young adult books by these authors. Um, so really like what I should also be doing is doing a review of each of these books and putting them on this blog. But this isn't, this is kind of from my fiction. I don't actually do young adult book review stuff. Although I did set up another site just for young adult book reviews um, because that is something that's smart. And I've, this is a group um, blog that I made so that uh, there's a lot of us, there's like 700 of us in the Young Adult Alliance on Facebook. So we can all post on this book review site um, to build up traffic, which is good for all of us. This site's already getting some traffic. And then I can have links to my stuff on the side. 
Um, so that's something, I mean, it would take me, like, I don't have time to review every young adult book, and there's so many book reviewers out there already, but by making a community site um, together with 100 other authors, we can build enough content to rank pretty well for young adult stuff. Um, but I can't really do that on my blog because I don't review that many books. Um, but I do want to mention them. And ideally, if I was brave enough, um, I would also share this giveaway with these authors so that they would share it with their audiences. Um, and that's a way that I can reach those audiences, but also a way that I can build a, a relationship with those authors. That's something I've done more like in this other giveaway I did. If you do that, the other authors will tweet and then you can embed the tweet on your page. So what I've done, this is a giveaway I did, but I titled it on my WordPress blog, Best Sci-Fi Time Travel Books for Teens 2016, which is something people are searching for and very few young adult authors or publishers are considering. They're like, they're not writing about this stuff. So when people search for this stuff, they find my site, even though I'm kind of a nobody, I'm just starting out, um, but nobody else is you know, thinking keywords. So then on this site where I have the best sci-fi time travel books for, for teens, um, it's also more likely that these authors will share it because I'm saying, you know, these are the best books. So I'm, I'm talking about them in a positive way, and that makes it easier for them to share. Um, so these are a lot of the authors who I mentioned in that time travel giveaway, um, and I embed their tweets here, which makes it great for me because then I'm, it looks like I'm interacting with these famous authors, um, we're having a conversation. This giveaway is over, but I, I do more giveaways like this. And then at the bottom, I also have a link to my time travel book and a little description. So I did that for um, time travel books. I did that for dark fantasy. I did that for mermaid books. That was the first one I did. Um, somewhere. I have one that's just for mermaid books. This was the original page I set up for Shearwater. Um, which I might do for every, I didn't do for every book launch. I may not need it for every book launch. But that was my first, so I really tried harder. And it's also been, like, if I did such a big launch for every book, it would be more successful, because this, this first book is actually doing better than all the other books, probably just because I tried so hard to make everything go well. Um, somewhere there's a link to the best mermaid books. But actually, if you Google, like, best mermaid young adult books, you'll probably find my article pretty quickly. I just did the same kinds of things as this. Um, so people have asked me, isn't that kind of weird? Like, can you give away other people's books to build your platform? Isn't that kind of weird? Because, you know, it's, it's a little bit obvious that I'm kind of using these authors to build my platform, except um, on the one hand, I, I bought the books or I got the book signed um, and I'm giving them away. So I'm, it's not like I'm doing anything negative because I'm promoting these authors. I'm giving these authors more visibility um, and I'm connecting them to more readers, which is good for their book sales. So it's not really anything negative. Um, I haven't found that any author will be upset if you share their book, unless you say, like if you review it negatively or you said, I, I hated this book or something like that. Um, but even, like, even if you buy a book and didn't like it and review it negatively, you still have the right to do that. Um, so I don't like get permission from these authors to give away these books. But um, I think it's fine to give books away and build your platform. A lot of people are giving away books. Um, a lot of big publishers give away books. It's You've got to be careful not to make it too spammy. Um, but if you do things well and you're building a real following, you can invite them to like your book also. But I'm not really doing it. Like, I don't really market my books or sell my books to my list. I usually just use my list to give away free stuff. Um, and to boost my rank and to get a lot of reviews. Eventually, when those people have become real fans who like my fiction, then I might start um, offering, if they want to buy the book, that's fine. But really, my target audience is like, my fans help me promote the fiction to get it to rank well. My target audience are new people who see my books on Amazon 
um, and are willing to pay for it. But you know, a couple years down the line, when I have a bunch of fans and they, they've, you know, they get book one for free, um, I've already had people email me saying that you know, now that they've got the first book for free, they'd be happy to buy all the other books in the series. So they they want to support me once I give them that chance. I'm just giving away the free books to kind of to reach them. Um, so those were the other things you need to consider if you're doing a King Sumo giveaway. You want to be using keywords, you want to put the blog post on your blog so that it's there long term. Um, and actually like this, what I really should do for 8 signed young adult books from blah blah blah, it's good that I'm using these keywords because people are going to be searching for Yelp, um, but I should also probably make another blog post that's like the 10 best um, magical fantasy books set in London in 2016. Not all of these are set in London, but you know what I mean, like focus more on the types of books and what people are searching for because that's the content that's going to rank long term. Um, and I should do that every year. So even if I only like, if every year I did the best time travel books, the best mermaid books, um, those would be great pieces of content. I even like, I took some of these, whoops. What I, what I also should be doing, and I think I did this earlier, uh, is that I would take this stuff, I take these best time travel books, um, I would turn them into a slide share, which is a PowerPoint presentation that I can put on slide share. I could make a YouTube video talking about like a brief review of these books. Um, I wonder if I can just search for Best Mermaid Books. So here's my post. I did a big one on Best Mermaid Books. Um, so here's 32 magical mermaid novels for young adult authors readers who like who enjoy paranormal romance. So I hit a bunch of keywords and I I shared a lot of authors. So um, because I'm not I didn't even do a giveaway for this, I think. So then I just emailed all these authors and I said, you know, I featured you in this article. And then a lot of these authors tweeted or retweeted or shared it, which is great. Um, so I get to embed their tweets. And then I just link to their books on Amazon. So this, I mean, this is a really great piece of content that's going to stay here for a long time. I got a lot of those authors to share it and retweet it, which is a great way for me to build my platform and traffic from zero really quickly. Um, and at the bottom, oh, and then down here, I also, I had this mermaid giveaway with uh, stuff for mermaids that I did when I launched Sheer Water. Anyway, so I do a lot of of this type of stuff, um, because I want to build a big platform really quickly, I, I should mostly just be writing and everyone says, you know, just keep writing and write more books because you won't really make money until you have three or four books out or you have a series out. Um, but I want to make a full-time living as an author in my first year of publishing fiction. That's kind of my goal. Um, and by full-time living, I mean a couple thousand a month, which isn't a lot of money, but it's enough you know, especially because we're living abroad, um, 2,000 a month in in Bulgaria or in Taiwan actually is, is plenty, which means I can just be writing full time and keep writing more books, which means I can uh, finish more products faster and boost my income quite a bit. So that's why I'm doing all this stuff. It, it might sound like a lot of work, but actually um, I'm only building my platform now because I, you know, I'm starting from zero. But once I get up to like 25,000 fans on my email list, I won't really need to work very hard to to build my platform. I still probably should um, because it'd be great. You know, it doesn't hurt to have more fans, but it also gets easier. All this stuff, once you learn it, once you have the tools, it gets easier and easier. You build your platform and your relationships. Um, and so it's working really well for me. And so I hope these videos help you out. You can leave comments down below um, if you have questions or if you enjoyed this, then please share.